So just to start, this is a report that uh, comes out that is available through uh, the CDC. And it is a report that uh, is data collected from uh, 16 states. And this is a voluntary reporting. Uh, it uh, gives an idea of a lot larger population to look at. Um, here they show uh, 117 people who reported illnesses. Uh, that only comes down to about seven people per state. So this isn't an overwhelmingly risky sort of activity, but it's still important information. Um, one of the things that is unfortunate for us is that New York is not a reporting state in this. And uh, the other thing is that we get this late uh, because the people uh, that get their data collected in the different states don't have to report it until the October after the finishing of the calendar year. So we're just now getting uh, the information from a year ago uh, uh, that uh, we would have available and that didn't have any new information available for this particular presentation. So this is from the same data set. And here you can see for 2021, the symptoms in humans are uh, mostly gastrointestinal. There's some dermatologic. This has changed a little bit, which I think is not uh, representative of the disease that, that are caused, but more uh, the reporting that people are more aware of these things now. Uh, people do get generalized uh, symptoms such as feeling tired or uh, generally not well. Uh, there are some uh, ear, nose, and throat symptoms for people that ingest water or they breathe it in. Uh, and if people get really sick, they can feel like uh, uh, they're not breathing well. Uh, it can get in people's eyes and uh, get symptoms from that. And uh, unusual symptoms are neurologic or musculoskeletal, and those are people who are usually uh, pretty seriously ill. So here's a little difference in 2020, um, <clears throat> about 50-50 dermatologic and gastrointestinal, that is skin versus uh, your uh, stomach upset. But uh, rash and nausea are the most common things reported. Mean time, the mean is the middle number, not an average. And that is a, a, a about four hours until people start feeling sick. And the duration was a, about a day. So not terrible in that regard. Uh, a little different in uh, 2021, uh, where uh, diarrhea and vomiting were more often. Again, this is a relatively small number, but this is the data we have available. And uh, the uh, median time to illness is spread out over a much longer time where it may be uh, a couple of days before people started feeling ill and uh, lasted about, again about a day. So <clears throat> this is the, the pictures of the skin, uh, the irritation that people can get here on the forearm. Uh, and this individual probably was waiting in water for a period of time. These pictures come from Ontario County. Uh, you know, it's behind our little uh, poster here, but it's uh, a county uh, south of the big lakes. So this is probably not a commercial fisherman or uh, somebody probably more in involved in just being in the water uh, for personal issues. So <clears throat> New York doesn't have uh, reporting like that. The most you can get, uh, this is for 2022, is how many uh, reports of uh, cyanobacteria blooms that are available, uh, gives you some idea of the risks. Uh, so here in Otsego County, we had 18 reported and uh, technically uh, identified blooms uh, in, in uh, that year, but uh, we don't know specifically about uh, individual people. So <clears throat> one of the things that uh, is pretty obvious, if you can see the, the person that has the rash, is the first thing you want to do is if you think you're in the water that where there's uh, toxins is rinse off with clean fresh water as soon as possible and this is what the cdc says on the other hand if you think you've been poisoned by it you probably should get in touch with real medical care uh, because uh, the potential for it to be uh, make you sicker is uh, is something different um, if there's a little gi upset you don't feel too bad that's a little different, but if you really think uh, that you've been poisoned by it, uh, the way they describe it, uh, uh, there isn't uh, this over-the-counter sort of therapies that you can do for this. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. <clears throat> well, one of the other ways we can encounter uh, them other than direct contact with the 
uh, with the water is that uh, cyanobacteria toxins can get up in the air. And if you look at a raindrop coming down and it makes a splash, and as the splash comes in, the water shoots up uh, a little bubble, and then the walls of that fall down. And as they fall down, they meet exactly in the middle and pop up another little uh, drop of water. And that little drop of water can then be blown by the wind uh, somewhere else. And uh, you can uh, get cyanobacteria in that little droplet because they make oxygen. So they float uh, in rough water. They get bigger bubbles so that uh, a little more pushed up. And uh, basically that droplet can be blown to us and that we can encounter that as uh, something that we would breathe in. Uh, it also is one of the mechanisms by which uh, the toxins get blown all over the world. They can get blown to another lake or another country for that matter. And uh, they are ubiquitous and you can find them uh, in uh, hot springs. Uh, you can find them in the tops of mountains. You can find them in Antarctica. Uh, they've been blown just about everywhere. So uh, just a review from the CDC, you can have skin contact, you can breathe them in, you can swallow them in uh, water. And then they talk about eating contaminated food and we'll touch on that briefly with a little different topic, but this is mostly for people who live along the coast uh, uh, and use uh, shellfish who tend to concentrate the toxins uh, by their filtration activity. And if they eat a lot of shellfish, Locally, they can get sick from that, but that's not a common sort of thing to happen in upstate New York. 